what it is what it ain't it's your girl ombre alert and i am back with another video we are in the last video of the black pioneers black history month edition video it is sad but not to worry i will be doing more black pioneer videos i did just recently do a jean michelle basquiat video so if you want to check that out it will be the second video after this so make sure you check out all of the um, black history month edition videos that i have done this entire month um i've learned so many you know great things out of doing this it's not just about you know putting these um wonderful inspirational inventors and you know just brilliant people you know out there for everyone to see it's about you know learning something myself i've done a lot of research i can i can show y'all the paperwork okay everything that i'm telling y'all in this video i've done my own research i write papers i know you see me in the videos you know just just looking at papers and stuff because i literally write down all the facts that i'm telling you right now i do the research i'm sharing it with you guys so i'm hoping that you know this inspires everybody to you know everybody of course to just learn more about our history you know what i'm saying just just free your mind you know get more intellectual get deeper and it'll just make you feel better about your skin and about your life all right so we are in the last video like i said so let's get into it the black pioneer that i am going to talk about is James Hemings and he is the first black chef to travel to Paris and learn French cuisine. So if you want to learn about James Hemings and his cooking ability, I need you to like this video. I need you to subscribe right now because it's going to get juicy. It's going to get popping. Okay. So um, with him being the first black chef, uh, to grace his presence in Paris and learn French cuisine, he did not always have this ability, this opportunity. So he did um, start off as a slave. He was born in 1765 and he died in 1801. Um, he was with a family, a you know, master called Wales, and their estate was the Wales estate, and he lived with this family up until he was nine years old when he was nine years old i believe the master um passed away so they gave the master gave him and his brothers and sisters to his daughter at the time so his daughter ended up marrying thomas jefferson so he ended up living with thomas jefferson and thomas jefferson became his master at the age of nine so he lived with Thomas Jefferson, and um, the interesting thing about this situation is, is that his brothers and sisters were the half, um, were were related to their new, you know, um, master, the master's wife. So the lady of the house was their sister, in other words and in other words of you just follow me here follow me in other words their original master which is wales the original master was james hemming's father so james hemming's mother and and the master had the children together so all of james hemming's uh, sisters and brothers came from wales so that was their father so in other words they're mixed race and they're related to their new the new lady of the house so that was their sister so i know it's it's hard just follow me when i saw that i had to read it a couple of times i was like what what i mean but it you know it doesn't surprise me just because things like that happen all the time back in slavery you had to do whatever the master said you know you had to clean after him you had to feed him if you if he wanted to have sex with you you had to have sex with him whether you wanted to or not so they did have six children together hemmings is one of the um children that they had together so thomas jefferson was the new master they were all living together um nine-year-old james hemmings as he was getting older he stayed close to thomas jefferson as we know thomas jefferson is our third president 
of the United States. So um, whenever he did travel, he took James with him and, you know, showed him how to protect him and his family. So just in case, you know, something might go down, James, you know, had to, um, his role was to take care of the um, children and his wife and give them to, you know, take them to safety, basically. So after he uh, james hemmings got a little older and more you know like turned into a young adult um they did sail from boston to paris and they were in paris from 1784 to 1790 and that's when james hemmings learned french cuisine and he studied french cuisine for three years and although the language barrier was kind of difficult james hemmings did become the head chef um, after, of course, being an apprentice to pastry chefs and restaurant chefs, he did um, have control over the kitchen and became the lead chef, which is cool. And he started to, you know, just be interested in the French culture in France in general. So he started to take some of the money that he got from working um, to hire a tutor. And that's how he learned um, French. So not only did that help him, you know, speak better with the people in the kitchen, but he also um, could understand people speaking the language more. So it made him curious about the laws in, in France and um, about becoming a free man. So that's where he started to get his curiosity with wanting to be free. Um, he did cook for a lot of established people while in Paris he cooked for European aristocrats, authors, you know, all people in the social world at the time. Because of Thomas Jefferson's status, he did have a better opportunity at, you know, um, achieving certain amounts of goals and, you know, uh, he just got a better shot at his career with Thomas Jefferson you know, back in him. So, um, he did get paid less than, um, Thomas Jefferson paid his last chef at the time because, I mean, I don't really know why that that's the case, but, um, yeah, at the time, Thomas Jefferson was paying him less than he paid his last chef. Maybe he didn't feel like he was, like, his cooking ability was all the way there yet, who knows, but that's a little shady if you ask me, a little shady, just, just a little shady. Um, <laughs> yes, he did become curious about um, his freedom and after they did do their traveling um, in 1790, they did leave Paris and they went to New York and he was cooking in New York. Um, he was able to run his own kitchen and from New York they went to Philadelphia and in Philadelphia the interesting thing was um, that the laws were different so it actually states at, it actually states at the time in Pennsylvania um, that it says if a slave is brought into the state and continues therein for the space of six months he may claim his freedom. So basically, if a slave is brought to Pens if a slave is brought to Philadelphia and stays there for six months, then he can claim his own freedom. So he can be free. Um, he was in in Philadelphia for six months, but we don't know why he chose to wait to become free. He could have became free within the time that he was there because he was there for six months, but he chose to wait. Um, yes, 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 yes. So he did, um, at the age of 30, he did negotiate um, his freedom with Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Jefferson's only, um, I guess, catch to the agreement was that he had to teach someone else to cook to his liking. So that was like the, um, he made this agreement in 1793 with Hemmings and that was his like only catch was that he had to teach someone else how to cook to his ability. So the person that he chose was his brother. Um, after two years of the agreement, because at the time it was 1793, but it was the end of the year. So by 1796, he did, um, 
choose to just say, you know, throw the agreement away and be like, okay, you've met my standards. You are a free man now. So, um, the awkward part about that is that he actually thought that, um, Hemings will want to work with him still, even though he was a free man. Um, I don't think that was the case for Hemings. I think that since he was free now, he just wanted to spread his wings and, you know, cook for other people. So, I believe at the time he was in Baltimore and Jefferson um, was figuring out like where he wanted to live. So once he did that, he was working on his campaign and he was working on where he was going to stay at. So he did summon um, Hemings to come back and work for him. But I, um, I think I think this is the, the, the beautiful part about Hemings is that he wasn't playing like he was on his own and he was working um but he did say that okay like i'll work for you but i want to know what the conditions are going to be like i want to know how much i'm going to get beginning paid because he was going to be working with strangers and their servants and they're not free men like he's a free man so i feel like he just didn't want any conflict with people you know at work so i think that's you know admirable for him so thomas jefferson did find a replacement um instead of you know messaging um james hemmings back answering him on his request to come back to work he just didn't answer him at all when he was asking about, you know, being properly paid and what the conditions were going to be, you know, am I going to be spending the night? What, am I going to be coming in the morning? Like, he just wanted to know because he's a free man now. And that's, you know, that's all good. So, um, he didn't answer him. He just replaced him with someone else. Uh, another chef that was a native to France. So, he knew French cuisine like the back of his hand. So I feel like since he didn't answer him, he just, Hemings came anyway and came back to work for him. Um, and then two months later, he actually committed suicide. So um, people don't really know why he committed suicide. Um, it's up in the air. Even in my research, I was trying to figure it out, but it was so long ago that I don't think we know, but um, there was a quote in my research saying something about drinking too freely as a free man, and that was the cause of it, but um, if that's the case, it is kind of tragic. Um, I mean, period is tragic, because he was only like 36, uh, and he was finally free, something that a lot of black people wanted to be at the time, so... It is very tragic and sad, and um, I will say that um, he did teach a lot of people other than his brother to cook, so he had a lot of successors, and he had a lot of success for himself, period, um, at the time that, you know, he did pass away. And he did um, influence a lot of people in the culinary world and in the culinary arts. So he is a black pioneer. I want to close out this video and say thank you for watching. Thank you for rocking with me this Black History Month. Um, every Black History Month, I will do videos like this because it's very important for us to know our history and to stay educated and to remain humble because the beginning you know, the beginnings of these people were very tragic and very sad and there was limited hope and there was limited faith. But through all of the adversity, they changed their life and they made things possible for us to be where we are today. And I feel like in our culture, we just got to stick together. And if we want things to change, we just got to educate ourselves and educate our little ones so that they can change the future as well. All right, I am very excited about March. March is coming up. I do have a lot of videos that I am gonna be putting out. Um, there's a lot of things to talk about. I found that hard to do during this month, but it's, it is very important to, you know, just be focused on black history, you know, during this month. And moving forward, I'm gonna be focused on black history. I'm just passionate about my race anyway. But, um.
I do want to say thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. It's going down. It's 2020. Let's get it. Let's get it. the support going. It's on Brailler. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe. And I'm out of here. Bye.